Today, we are talking about the Leica Super Vario Elmerit 14-24 2.8 lens. One of the things that held me back from getting into the Leica SL system was its lack of a lens like this one. Every single camera system I've ever owned, Nikon, Sony, Canon, I've always had one zoom lens. And that zoom lens was the 16 to 35 or the 15 to 35. Always in a 2.8, and that was one of my most used lenses specifically for video because I could throw a filter on the front, a VND on the front, and it's a really great run and gun option. Leica didn't have an option like this when I switched to the SL system, and that was actually kind of a hindrance for me. There's the 16-35 F4 from Panasonic, and I believe Sigma makes one as well. The F4 has never really caught my eye because for video, I like to shoot at 2.8, and this was definitely a hindrance for me. When I saw that Leica announced the 14 to 24 f2.8 i was pretty excited not gonna lie i knew that i this could potentially be the lens that would finish out my sl kit i say finish out but it's ever changing it's always growing i liked the idea of it because that's been a focal length that i've been missing a lot on the system so i knew that i had to rent it a couple things about this video nobody's sponsoring this video but if you wanted to help uh, you can check out my monochrome presets in the link below i rented and paid for this lens myself that's all the housekeeping for you this 14 to 24 fits in line with the leica's 24 to 70 line um a lot of people say that it's also designed by sigma because there is a almost carbon copy clone of it made by Sigma for about $1,100 cheaper. So this lens comes in at around $2,500 if you're buying it brand new. The Sigma version is $1,400, so you'll, you're just gonna have to make that decision for yourself. The Leica version is a all metal body. Sigma's is not. I personally prefer the look and the functionality that it provides with the native lenses on the system. This lens was a combination of happy and sad for me because of the way that the front element is and i should have realized this when i ordered it and this is totally like my fault but i rented it and so i didn't realize that i needed to have special nd filters in the back unless i wanted to use my map box which i was traveling so i couldn't bring my map box because there was just no space for it because i brought this on a trip to california for a project that i was working on for my church really i wanted to use this lens for video but because of the nature of the nd situation i tried to order <laughs> some ND filters in time and they didn't arrive and it was just kind of disappointing because the only time that I was able to use it for video was at night or in shade or totally stopped down. I did learn a lot about this lens. I didn't get to use it for so much video and I was planning on kind of vlogging the trip and it just I realized that it wasn't going to work and honestly even if those ND filters did come I don't think that vlogging or using this as like a run and gun video setup is super viable because for me I like using VNDs because you can switch them really quickly I actually I film a lot of stuff with my family around the house and doing like personal work and I'm constantly going in and out in and out doing shade and sunlight and I'm changing from two stops of ND to five stops of ND consistently for this lens you're you'd have to take the lens off get the other ND pull the other one out put the other one in and it just kind of seemed like a bit of a hassle um, for what I personally would have wanted to use this lens for if you're in consistent lighting situations you could totally get away with that but as far as I know there is not a vnd option now obviously you would get around this by putting a matte box on the front and that's a totally viable option because the entire lens is enclosed in its housing so it doesn't protrude out like the 2470 does it stays in and all the zooming happens inside the lens on that note it is a fixed aperture so you can be at f2.8 and go from 14 to 24 which is always a big plus i know that this was uh set and marketed as a video lens unfortunately because of the nd situation i just couldn't use it the way that i wanted to use it as a video lens 
on this. Now, there were a few video clips that I was able to capture with it. A lot of these wide angle lenses, especially when you're using them for video, well, only when you're using them for video, have kind of a gelatin effect. And I think that's just the internal stabilization of the camera working with such a wide lens. I know Canons are notorious for that, but this Leica one is definitely no exception to it. It does have that jelloing effect and it's quite interesting. It kind of like pops. The entire image pops forward and back. I was able to stabilize it, but definitely know that that is a possibility. So I don't know if I, I was just going handheld with it. So I don't know if throwing it on a stabilizer would have helped with that. That's definitely something to consider. But other than that, the lens was phenomenal. I really enjoyed using it. It's super light. It fits really well and it does kind of fit in that gap, especially when I'm carrying my SL2 and my SL2S. It fits in a great gap that uh, carrying those two cameras together with a 2470 and a 14 to 24 feels very cohesive. I wasn't feeling like I was missing anything with that setup. For photos, I didn't set this up on a tripod and get landscapes or do anything like that because that's really not my style. I'm a more run and gun, shoot, handheld, do whatever. And I was able to get these photos of the stars out in Joshua Tree handheld with the SL2S. I don't know if that says more about the lens or about the internal stabilization of the like a SL2S. I think that looks pretty sick for having no tripod. Now, obviously you can take better photos than this with a tripod, but handheld just sitting outside of a restaurant getting into the car, that's pretty cool. As far as the image quality on it, I was really impressed. I really enjoyed using this lens and I was really happy with the results that I got from it. Again, it just really comes down to the way that that front element is designed and how the ND filter is, is inside the lens mount. So I think uh, for me, it doesn't really fit that gap that I needed it to. I really wish that it wasn't a 14 to 24 and maybe like a 15 or 16, just because then I think they would have been able to have a flat front element and be able to use screw on VND filters. So I'm gonna hold off on this lens, at least for now. I did really enjoy using it. I thought it was a great experience and I love a lot of the images that I got from it, but it just, uh, yeah, it's not the hybrid photo video lens that I really wanted it to be, unfortunately because I really, really wanted to like this lens. <laughs> but I guess maybe, I mean, save me 2,500 bucks. So that's kind of a win. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've got any questions about it or if you just want to share your two cents, uh, drop them down below in the comments. I'll respond to every comment and I will see you in the next video video.